a car out of one. I pray this devil died and did every evil thing the Lord got to get. And listen, I know you look at us in the state we in right now. Call me out, Call me out, Call me out, I know you look at us in the state we in right now, black people on drugs, and we suffering and dying. And I know it seems like you can do whatever you want to this people. I know it seems like this, but the time for glorifying yourself is soon at an end. People thought you, by, by Christianity, you think that the, the, the prophets of the Lord were going to be soft men, would be soft men. Well, all in this Bible, you understand that the prophets of the Lord was hardcore warriors. They wasn't no soft men. And they were black men. They wasn't no white men with beards and Roman togas on. But through Christianity, that's what we learn what the prophets are. So Christ is asking right here, what did you went out to see? Do you want to, what, do you want to see what a men in soft raiment? No, because in, what, in the Bible, the, the, the prophets of the Lord, they are hardcore warriors. They're not soft men. And that's what Christ said, what you went out to see, a man in soft raiment? Read. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. They that wear soft clothing, they're in the king's house, they rich. They the king of that's right. They can they can lounge around, but the prophets of the Lord don't come out. We don't come out in soft raiment. That's why we look the way we look. That's why we hardcore the way we are, <clears throat> and we not no soft men. And that's why the Christ is asking, "What did you went out to see? A man in soft raiment? Something soft? Something weak? Well, that's what Christianity has taught you." The prophets of the Lord are just weak, humble men. Nice men that speak soft and they come out and they don't bother anybody. Well, that's a lie of Christianity. The prophets of the Lord are hardcore men. And they've and they always been hardcore men. That's why right now when we come out, you look at us like we crazy, like we got a problem. Well, in the Bible, this is how, how, how they rock their, their clothes. This is how they look. They didn't walk around with Roman togas on and looking like they have pajamas on like the Pope or something. Okay, brother, give me, give me numbers 15 and 38. Because we just don't understand how the prophets of the Lord look. We think prophets of the Lord are weak, soft men. And that's why Christ in that precept the brother just read that Christ is asking what you went out to see. Men in soft raiment? You didn't understand him, that the prophets of the Lord are look like us. And when we say the ass you became, the prophets of the Lord are in the ass you became, y'all look at us, oh, like we're strange or something, because the way we look. Well, we not soft men like here, back here. And neither were the prophets in the Bible soft men. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. Now, now, this the Lord said, tell the Moses to speak to the children of Israel. Y'all wonder why we got these things? Yeah, y'all wonder why we have these fringes on our clothes? This is why we have these fringes on our clothes. Y'all see these fringes on our clothes? And y'all look at us like, oh, it's something strange. Isn't that something strange? It's something of the Lord that he commanded us to do. He commanded us to put these fringes on our clothes. And the brother is getting ready to give it to you right now. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Fringes and the borders of their garments. This is why we have this on our clothes right now. Because the Lord commanded us to do it. Read on. Throughout their generation. How long? Throughout their generation. Throughout their generation. That means you never stop putting fringes on your clothes. You should always have fringes on your clothes. Why? Read on, brother. And they that put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. That's why we have this blue up here on our fringes. You see this blue up here, this blue ribbon? This is why. Because the Lord, this is the commandment of the Lord that we do it. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. Hey, thank you, brother. Hey, grab a flyer, brother. Read that again, brother. And it shall be unto you 
for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. You hear that? All the commandments of the Lord. Now how many times in the Christian church do you see people walk around with fringes on their clothes? How many times do you see a Christian pastor walking around with fringes on his clothes with a ribbon of blue on the border? You never see it. Because why? The Christian church doesn't even understand the Bible. The Christian church is wickedness. That's what it is. That's why you never see fringes in the church with the border of blue. Now God commanded us to do this and keep it so we can keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. God commanded us to wear fringes on our clothes with the border of blue. This is why we wear this on our clothes. But we just don't understand it because we're in religion. We don't, we're in a Christian church. We don't understand that God commanded us to put this on our clothes. And we don't understand. But one reason is we don't even understand that we are the Israelites of the Bible. How many times in the church does the preacher teach that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are the Israelites of the Bible? Never. Because we are destroyed for before religion. Because of religion, we are destroyed in, in churches. And we don't keep none of the laws of the Lord in the church. And you don't never know nothing about I did I was in the church my whole life. I never knew about fringes on the clothes. Right. I never knew about this. But this is why we walk around. You see these brothers and all of us with fringes on our clothes. Because there's a commandment from God that we do this. So don't look at us like we strange when you see us with fringes on our clothes with a border of blue. It's a commandment of God. He said throughout your generations, you never stop doing this. You always keep this up. Okay, brother. Give me, give me Acts um, 13 and 22. We gotta understand this Bible, people. This Bible is about the Israelites, the, the, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. And we got to keep these laws. And the prophets of the Lord are in the ISUPK, not in the Christian church. Because we, we keep the laws of the, of the Bible. And anything, anything we do, you can find it in the Bible. That's right. Everything the ISUPK do, you're going to find it in the Bible. You're not going to come and see the ISUPK doing something, and it's not in the Bible. It's always in the Bible because we are the prophets of the Lord. Right. Okay, brother, you got that? Okay, read. Acts. Chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. Now, 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 it's talking about King David. Now, after he removed Saul, the king of Israel, he raised up David, King David. Read on. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Oh, God said, what about David? A man after my own heart. God said David was a man after his own heart. And God said, God said David was a man after his own heart. That means David was, David was righteous and he's going to do his will. He's a man after his own heart. Read on. We shall fulfill all my will. He shall do what? Fulfill all my will. And David's going to fulfill all God's will. Then this right here. This right here is the shield of David. Like we have on, you see brothers in the ISUPK, you see us walking around with this shield on it? This is David's name. It's a signet. It's Dawah. David's name in Hebrew is Dawah Da. The Da is a triangle. So if you put the two Da's together, you're going to come out with the shield of David. Now what, what does the Jewish man say? The Jewish man says it's the star of David. Well, it's not the star of David. It's the shield of David. That's right. And just you put the two dolls together and it come out with the shield of David. So that's what we rock this. Because why? This is the shield of David and God sets a man after his own heart and he's going to fulfill his will. He's going to fulfill all of God's will. And God raised him up to be the king over Israel. Okay, brother. Give me Luke 1, 1 and 32. We got to understand this Bible. Where in the eyes you became, you're going to find the prophets of the Lord. And we're going to keep all the laws of the Lord. That's right. And we're going to go out and we're going to cry loud and understand and let people know that what? The wickedness that's coming down and the wickedness that we do and the wickedness that's coming down on America while we serve in America. And you're not going to find this truth nowhere but in the ISUPK, the home of the truth. That's right. You get that, brother? Okay, Luke. 
Yeah, Luke 1 and um, 32. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. He shall be great. And talking about Jesus Christ, he shall be great. And shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Give unto him his what? The throne of his father David. The throne of his father David. See, when Christ comes back, when Christ comes back, um, God said he's going to sit Christ on the throne of David. So when you see this shield we rocking, you don't, don't think, don't, you got so many dumb things. People, you got gas people walking around talking about, oh, that's the, that's the star of Molech and all that old wickedness and the Illuminati. You got all this type of wicked stuff going on. But no, this is the shield of David. This is why I should be can't rock this shield. This is why we rock this shield, because Christ is going to sit on the throne of David when he comes back. That's right. That's what you have to understand. And it's not the star of Molech or the Illuminati. It's not that. This right here is the shield of David. And don't let that wicked Jewish man tell you, oh, it's the star of David. <laughs> That's what they say, you know. But it's the shield of David. Okay, brother. Brother, give me, give me Deuteronomy 1 and 15. No, no, I'll tell you what, scratch that. Give me. Hey, can I get the part of Bob the show? Yeah, okay, okay. Give me, give me Matthew on 5 and 17. See, we just don't understand that what, what, what we do in the churches is not, is not of the Bible. The Christian church does that nothing it is, is of the Bible. But here in the Ask UPK, we do things that's of the Bible. We, we serve the Lord. We serve Christ. We do, we do things that the Lord commanded us to do in the Bible. You get that, brother? Okay, read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Now Christ said, think not that I have come to destroy the law. Now what does the Christian church teach? The laws are done away with. We don't have to do those old laws. We don't have to do those old laws. Christ came and died for us. Well, that's a Christian lie. That's right. Christ is saying right here in red, read that again, brother. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Now, Jesus said, think not that he's come to destroy the law. Read on. All the prophets, all the prophets. If he came to destroy the law, he's destroying the prophets too, that been before him, the ones that kept the law. So Christ said, think not that I've come to destroy the law. But what do Christianity teach? Christ came and died on the cross and to, to do away with those laws. And that's nothing but a lie. And that shows that the Christian church doesn't even read the Bible. They don't even understand this Bible and their wickedness. And the pastors, they go and preach another gospel. And that's why they are wicked. Okay, brother, man, read on. Think not that I come to destroy the law all the prophets I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now Christ said he come to fulfill the law. He didn't come to destroy the law. He come to fulfill the law. Read on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. One jot or one tittle will let no longer no wise pass away from the law. Men will pass from the law because Christ came to fulfill these laws. The Christian church teaches we, the laws are done away with, but we gotta understand if we would keep the laws, then we wouldn't be destroyed in here. We wouldn't be destroyed if we would keep the laws. But the Christian church teaches with the, we, the, the laws are done away with. Hey, thank you, brother. Hey, grab a flyer, brother, get a flyer. The Christian church teaches that the laws are done away with. And we have to understand that Christ said out of his own mouth in bread, Matthew 5 and 17, to think not that the laws are done away with. Because the laws are not done away with. Read on. Whoever shall, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and so teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. You can't break none of these laws. And that's why the laws are so important. Because if we keep these laws, we won't kill each other. That's right. If we keep these laws, we won't have, we won't have sicknesses, diabetes. 
We won't have get we won't have high blood pressure if we keep these laws. We won't be eating shrimp, pork, and lobster that gives you diabetes and high blood pressure. If we keep these laws, our women won't abort our babies. If we keep these laws, we'll be straight as a people, and we'll be righteous unto God as a people. But we don't have because we're destroyed by the Christian church that says the laws are done away with when they are not done away with. Okay, brother, give me take take me to um take me to First Samuel um eight and twelve. We just want to understand it. This Bible is for us, black people, Hispanic people, Native Indian people, and we have to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments and. <clears throat> We have to all, and these laws and statutes and commands will keep us straight. And we have to understand that. That this Bible is our constitution. That's it's not right. for everybody. Right. It's for us, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, the people who are on the bottom around the world. Because we are God's chosen people. And all the Christianity and religion teach us to go against the Bible and the laws. Okay, brother, you get that? Okay, read. First Samuel chapter 8, verse 12. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties. Oh, he said he will appoint. Now, now, now understand this. And understand this. In his eyes you became, in the eyes you became, we have captains. We have generals, captains, and officers. And a lot of people don't don't want they don't want they don't like the order that we have. Well, you have to have order. How are you gonna raise up a nation with no order? The order is from the Lord and it's in the Bible. And you have to keep these orders. Because why? If you're gonna, if you go, if you can't take orders, how are you gonna give orders? How are you gonna build a nation? How are we gonna come out of America? How are we gonna come out of religions and philosophies? You have to have men that's gonna lead the people. And that's why Commanding General Yohanna has been is the man who to lead the people under Christ. Because why? Under Christ, he, under the commanding general Yahana, is going to lead Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Because why? All through the Bible, you had a prophet to lead the people. Suppose there was no Moses. And people, how are they going to come out of Egypt? You had a man to lead the people. The prophets, God always appointed a prophet to lead the people. So that's what we do in, in the ASUPK. That's why we have captains and officers. And a lot of people don't want to come. That's why you get a lot of people want to start their own thing because they don't want like the order that we have. So that's the order of the Bible. This is why you have that. This is why people come to all, come up on the street and ask me, well, hey, why y'all be saying your captains and generals and all that stuff? What's that about? It's of the Bible. It's of the Lord. That's what it's about. So don't come and ask us on the street why we have captains and generals and officers and why we have that order because it's the order of the Lord in the Bible. So you don't have to guess and wonder. Come on, come, sir. Okay, now, give me... Okay, okay, give me... Give me Isaiah 28 and 10. Because we have, we have to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. And understand it, when the ISUBK does something, it's out of the Bible. We keep the laws, statutes, and the commandments of the Lord, and what, how we, um, how we um, give this, um, this Bible, and how we present this Bible, it's of the Lord, and it tells you in the Bible how to present the Bible, and how to read the Bible. Okay, you get that, brother? Okay, read. Isaiah chapter, chapter 28, verse 10, for precept must be upon precept. Hey, say that again. How do you read the Bible? For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. Un understand, it said must be. That means the verses in the Bible, the precept. Precept must be upon precept to understand the Bible. Because why? If you try to read this Bible like a novel, you're not going to understand it. You're not going to get it. But it has to be, it said precept must be upon precept. That, that should be. It says precept must be upon precept because you have to have precept upon precept to understand it. So that's why it's net, Isaiah's nailing it down right now. Precept must be upon precept when you're reading the Bible. Read on. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. 
here a little, and there a little, here a little, and there a little. You go to the Old Testament, you go to the New Testament, you're going to find the precepts that match. It's going to be telling the same thing. Line upon line, precept upon precept, this is how you read the Bible. Right. This is what the Bible, this is what the ISUPK has been doing since 1969. Precept upon precept. And this is the, the ISUPK is the home of the truth, the only place you're going to get those precepts. Because you can read that all day long, precept upon precept. <laughs> but if you're going to come to the ISUPK, you're not going to get those precepts. That's why this precept is so heavy right here in the Bible. It says precept upon precept, line upon line. You have to get that to where I understand the Bible. This is why we are destroyed in religions. Because in the church, they don't do precept upon precept. Because why? They don't even have the precepts. They don't even have the, if they have a topic and a precept, they don't even have them. They don't even understand the precepts. Because in the church, you do not have the prophets of the Lord. You have the prophets of the Lord in the eyes you became across the nation. Okay, okay, brother. Okay, brother, give me give me John from 14 15. We gotta under we gotta understand it. We have to keep the laws of the Lord and we have to understand it. What? The eyes you became all the prophets of the Lord, and we've given you these precepts. And we keep these, we keep the laws and statutes and commandments of the Lord. We don't just come out here off the top of our mind, or the top of our head and start speaking. No, we study this thing. To why? To help the, to help you, to help the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians to come out of the sinful ways that they do in the world. To keep the laws and the statutes and commandments of the Lord. You get that, brother? Okay, read that. John chapter 14. Verse 15, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Now what did Christ say? If ye love me, keep my commandments. And that's a heavy scripture. Christ said if you love him, keep his commandments. Now look, does a Christian church keep the commandments? They holler all day, they cry, they sing, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, we love you, Jesus. All types of wicked songs and don't keep none of the commandments. Don't keep none of the laws, says the commandments of the Lord. And Christ, has, Christ is telling you right there. If you love me, keep the commandments. That way you show your love. That way he said he more like saying it. Don't talk about it, be about it. Right. If you want to say you love me, keep the commandments. Don't say you love me and sing and dance and run around the church and say you love me and don't keep the commandments. When the you became, we keep the commandments. We keep the commandments of the Lord. And we come out and tell you to keep the commandments. Because why? We are the prophets of the Lord here in the eyes to be When nowadays I work hard on the job, and I come cross shop, cross shop, still like I'm a criminal. I'm a criminal. Why I get caught, it could be your first charge like me. You ain't getting the man of all. Oh, it gon' dip, dip, squat, squat, five mile run, run. push, pull, sit on, got down, get strong. Oh. Looking at my baby, trying to keep him doing wrong. Oh. It's too long for they grow, I can't leave them on their own. Oh. They killed they did. Smart manhood.